Hey, what's up guys? It's Joe from Gadgetry Tech, and today we're going to talk about the Odyssey Penrose X. $300 wireless gaming headset, obviously meant for Xbox. You have the nice green coloring on the bottom and green on the ear cups. But I'm going to tell you now, if you get the Penrose X, it works just like the Penrose on PlayStation. You get the same physical buttons on it. If you set the transmitter in PC mode, the PlayStation detects it no problem. And you can use it wirelessly. You can still use the aux cable, which we'll discuss after, but I just want to let you know, if you want a good headset that works on PC, PlayStation, Xbox, and technically wireless on your phone or tablet, you can do all of that with the Penrose X. It's a very versatile headset. So $300 isn't cheap. That obviously brings in a lot of competition at this price point. Uh, if you're on the PC side and, and PlayStation side, you have a ridiculous amount of headsets to choose from. And on the PlayStation, you can go, or sorry, on the Xbox, you have the Astro A50s, you get the Stealth uh, 700 Gen 2s, Steel Series 9X, etc. There's a lot. There's a big price range. Then you get all the way up to the Bang and Olufsen Bayo Play Portals, which are 500. Um, so there's a lot of good competition. Now this is unique because this is the only wireless gaming headset for Xbox that uses planar magnetic drivers. Totally different speaker technology. Very different sound. There's a lot of advantages to planar magnetics, so we'll get into that. But this alone is a major differentiator against all the other headsets period, under 500. So even the Bang & Olufsen portals are 500 and those don't have uh, planar magnetics. So I'm gonna talk about how that works in a moment, but I'm gonna briefly go over specs because you can read about specs on the internet. Um, I'm here to talk to you about my user experience because I've used these for a long time. I've been asked about these since the end of 2020. It took me several months to get because of back orders and all this other stuff, but I finally have a set. I ended up using it for months. Um, because I had to learn a lot about this headset. There's some quirks to it, and I'm not here to mislead you. So anyway, let's get into the specs. So it's rated to have a 15 hour battery, which is definitely possible at lower to medium volumes, especially if you're not using Bluetooth at the same time, because it can do that. So I like that uh, it has a pretty adequate battery life. It's obviously not class leading when you have the others that can get 20 to 30 hours on one charge. But for how loud this goes and for using planar magnetic drivers, the battery life is totally fine. I got like 12 to 13 on average with each charge. Full charge takes three hours, so it's really not bad. Now it does charge with USB-C, which is why it can charge so quickly. Uh, the USB-C cable that's included is actually fairly long. You can use it while it's plugged in and charging, um, or if you're flashing the firmware or adjusting audio settings while uh, wirelessly connected to Xbox. We'll talk about that more, but um, Battery life is decent. Now, as far as the weight goes, weighs about 400 grams, so it's a little on the heavier side, but that's partly because of the planar magnetic drivers. It's an all plastic construction. It doesn't feel cheap. It looks fairly basic, obviously. There's nothing you know, standing out that makes it seem like it's a really high-end expensive headset, but it certainly doesn't look like a cheap throwaway headset by any means. You have a really nice quality detachable mic. Uh, this boom is super adjustable. You can even turn the mic uh, not like twist it basically, which is cool. Get a foam windsock there and then a memory foam headband. So the memory foam headband is comfy. It looks small, but I didn't find any pressure points or pain. Clamp force is a little bit on the stronger side. Uh, this headset requires a good seal to sound the way it should, the way Odyssey intended it. So the higher clamp force isn't bad. I found that I could wear these for about two hours straight before I started getting some ear fatigue, which came partly from the volume and partly from the higher clamp. The ear pads are very soft and supple. Um, so if you wear glasses, I don't wear prescription glasses, but I test glass glasses comfort or if I'm using the screen for a long time because I work from home, I wear uh, Gunnar glasses. And this is a pretty traditional frame and I can wear these no problem. Even though this is a more traditional foam and a strong clamp force, they are very plush and forgiving. It's a very soft foam and you do it does grab your glasses a little bit but it doesn't push too hard on the sides basically there's some good grip so they don't slide back and forth so once you find a good sweet spot i found it to be very comfortable so no problems there now when it comes to other comfort points um i didn't find my ears getting too hot which considering it was the pleather material and a close back uh, with a strong clamp force i still felt pretty comfortable with these there's a little bit of a vent here on the side uh, of the driver. I can open it up so you can see what I'm talking about. But overall, um, it's a pretty comfortable headset. Not top quality. You know, I think the portals are a little more comfortable. Um, the Stell 700s are a little bit more comfortable because of those huge 
foam with the gel infused ear pads, but this is still really good. So um, that covers comfort. Uh, I also, just on the note, it does swivel to lay flat. If you're one of those people that hangs it around your neck when you're not using it, you can certainly do that. Ear pads are removable. Um, actually, I'll do that after because I want to show you the, the speakers. When it comes to the buttons on it, so you have a physical uh, press button right here. Just press that and hold it down to turn it on. You have a physical on-off switch for the microphone. There's no lights or anything on the mic, but if you're muted, it's down. If the mic is on, it's up. So I actually like the physical switch because when you turn the headset on and off, you know the microphone's always staying off. So I like that. You get a mode button. This is basically where you're switching from um, your wireless mode, which is Xbox or you know using the transmitter. Then you have your detachable mic, the USB-C, you have your aux input right here, and then you have your adjustable mic volume and master volume for game and Bluetooth. They are one in one. Um, so you can't, I haven't found a way to really adjust the volume separately unless you're using like a music player on PC, just turn the music player down. But the volume rocker adjusts both sources uh, simultaneously. There was a firmware update for this. So if you press in on this, they do additional things. You can press in on the bottom wheel, for example, and fade from Xbox to uh, party chat to game chat, if you will. So there's some cool little tricks. Um, there's a new firmware update coming out. I debated on waiting to release my review after the next firmware update. I've already gone through one. Um, hopefully it brings some cool bug fixes, but uh, at this point I just wanna share what I can because the holiday season's coming and I want to help anyone on the market for something like this to make an educated decision. So um, that covers comfort and the build quality and layout. I'm gonna talk about a few things. So I mentioned planar magnetic technology. Totally different than what uh, a traditional headphone or headset is, especially on the gaming side. Almost every gaming headset is a dynamic driver, which is like your traditional speaker. When you take a grill off a speaker like this, you see a cone that's a dynamic driver. That's usually what's in headphones. Planar magnetic, basically on that one, the diaphragm is the cone and then your voice coil behind it is inside wound around a magnet. Um, or the magnet is around the voice coil and electrical current makes the speaker move back and forth. And all of that, there's a lot of engineering to make them sound different, of course, but the way planar magnetic works is you have very precisely cut magnets where the diaphragm is in between them and suspended between them. So when the electrical current comes in, the reason, the big advantage to this is they can get very large. This is a hundred millimeter driver. You get a lot more surface area so you can produce a lot more volume, a lot better power handling. But the transient response, like the, the transients, if you will, are so fast that when you hear these, it's not like, yeah, this has more bass or less bass. The bass just sounds a little different. It's much tighter, much more responsive. Um, and when you have a lot of bass that sounds that good, it can get pretty intoxicating. I'm not going to lie. I feel like once most people have a planar magnetic headset, um, a lot of dynamic drivers may not sound the same to them anymore. Obviously, when you get into higher end stuff, it's a different story. But um, at three hundred dollars to get planar magnetics on a gaming headset, that's freaking awesome. And they are something that I think everyone should try to hear. So, um, as far as sound quality goes, I'll just get right into it. The bass response is, even though the bass quality is excellent, it's so so good. It sounds like it's in full control the whole time. It's tuned to be slightly recessed down low. It doesn't rumble as much as you expect for how much power this has. This thing's rated for like 10 to 50,000 hertz, some ridiculous frequency response range. So they dig real deep if you want them to. They're just tuned not to be too strong or too present because this is a gaming headset and Odyssey tuned it as such. So um, you actually get a little bit brighter highs than I expected. Um, depending on the Odyssey planar magnetic headphone, they can be a little darker, a little bit more uh, neutral or, or reserved sounding, um, less playful, if you will. These are the opposite. These are like, if there's a footstep a mile away, we're gonna do everything we can to make sure you can hear it. So tuning wise for a gaming perspective, they're freaking amazing. Now, if you're using these for mu movies or music and you want that punch, that that Dolby cin Cinema rumble, just boost the 30 hertz, 60 hertz uh, bass up several dBs. Um, I know some people are probably gonna boost it like six to 10 dBs and it'll handle it just fine, but that'll really add some, some effect and rumble and immersion to it if you need it. So the power handling is there. 
It's just out of the box. It's fairly flat, especially in the mid range. The mid range is untouchable at three hundred dollars. One of the best quality mids you'll hear. Soundstage. So soundstage is basically um, how much space are there between instruments or points of audio sources in your game, for example. Does it sound like it's all right here and it's just here versus here? Or does it sound like it's way over there and I have really good perception of how open my space is? These are cream of the crop. Planar magnetics, when done correctly, which these are, um, give you ridiculous soundstage. It sounds very open and that with the brightness means you're gonna get a very um, accurate uh, positional awareness, if you will. They're super, super competitive. So from pure gaming alone, that's phenomenal. Um, certain songs, I found that these can get a little too bright. So if you're really trying to tune it, I don't wanna go down this path too much because I could talk about this for an hour straight. Um, but I did, I set, because the software gives you multiple EQ presets to play with, I had ones for music, different types of music my gaming one, and then I left it at flat just to see what Odyssey tuned it at uh, as comparison. I would cycle between them and pick one of my favorites. So um, I do like the sound quality a lot. Now we're gonna do a mic test, and this one's gonna be a little bit different. There's three ways this microphone works. You can use it wirelessly with the transmitter, which we'll do, and I'll record on my PC. You can use the aux cable, and it will pass the microphone audio via aux. Uh, to your phone, PC, tablet, whatever, or controller, because you can use aux to controller. And then I'll do a mic test with uh, do, using Bluetooth so you can hear what the microphone sounds like in Bluetooth mode. So let's just get right into that. All right, now I'm talking to you on the Penrose X headset and microphone. This is using USB wireless mode on Windows 10. Curious to see what you guys think. Um, I think the way they tuned it, it, it's not crystal clear and open. It doesn't sound as good as like a studio grade uh, headset mic that's uh, wired obviously with an analog connection um, but it's certainly good I think there's some warmth to it that actually has a little bit of bass on the low end which is nice and it's not too bright um, there's also some background noise filtering that they do uh, to help eliminate some of the background noise but that's not adjustable at least as of the current firmware the other big thing I want to say is the microphone is rated to do over 140 decibels of volume range uh, so if you scream that means your microphone shouldn't clip out so depending on what volume you speak at, it should always sound pretty clear. And I don't think you're going to get too many complaints on the mic. Uh, at least that's my opinion. Curious again what you guys think. So now I'm going to plug it in uh, with aux and we'll see what you think of that. All right, now I'm in aux mode. I, the aux mode should always sound the best. In this case, I think it does. It's comparable to the USB wireless mode, um, but you still get the benefits of that dynamic range. So this will work well whether you're using it on a Nintendo Switch, uh, a gaming console using a controller instead of the transmitter or you just want to plug and play and not deal with the wireless stuff at all. So microphone quality is excellent here as well. No surprise there. Curious what you guys think, of course. Now we're going to switch over to Bluetooth. All right, now I'm in Bluetooth mode, which naturally switches to a hands-free profile on the headset. It's not a one-way stream. There's limited bandwidth with Bluetooth, even on 5.0. So this is going to be the worst sounding quality microphone. If you want to use this headset simultaneously with Discord on your PC or phone while gaming on Xbox or your PlayStation, this is what the people on Discord are going to hear. So I wanted to do this test so you could see the, hear the difference of the three. You cannot use aux and wireless mode at the same time uh, for your console. So you can't benefit from a higher quality mic signal on two sources at once. This is how it works with Bluetooth. That's what everyone's going to hear on Discord. So I just want to throw that out there now. Okay, so we've covered the basic specs. We've covered the comfort, uh, the build quality, the buttons, sound quality to an extent, of course, and the mic. Uh, I'm trying to keep this review under 20 minutes, so I'm hoping I pull that off, but uh, I do want to talk about a couple other things. So there's been some reviews online talking about wireless connection issues. I've been one of them, admittedly, and I'm saying this because I try to take my reviews again as like a, a gamer, an owner of this stuff, and not a, just a standard reviewer. I'm not trying to push product. This was sent to me for review, and I huge thanks to Odyssey uh, and their PR team for... Uh, giving us a shot to cover their products. I still really, really like this headset, but the rest of this review, I'm just gonna talk about my experience with them because at the end of the day, when you spend $300, it's cool to say you have one of the best sounding headsets out there, but it has to work. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out why I was getting audio issues, and it's predominantly worse on Xbox, and it seemed to have gotten worse after I did my firmware update. Now my firmware update fixed some of my problems. Um, 
It added some really cool features with the, the EQ presets, the profiles, the uh, buttons on the scroll wheels, if you will, doing more than just basic volume control. So I still like the firmware update. Um, I was hell bent on trying to figure out what I can do to fix it. Some people, what they've done, and it's worked really well for them, is they use a USB extension cord. Not included in the box, but if you use on PC a USB 2.0 port um, or a USB hub, just try to mix up your USB port that you use. Try to move the transmitter around, get it closer to your headset, and it can reduce the issues. Now, this operates on 2.4 gigahertz, and it does not seem to auto-negotiate different channels or uh, frequencies, if you will, or basically the way the 2.4 connection works, it doesn't really care if your router is operating on a similar channel. That's where the majority of these connection issues come from. And again, it seems worse on Xbox, which for some reason with Xbox headsets, they always have more wireless issues than PlayStation. And I could say that because I reviewed about 40 or 50 different ones now, and it's predominantly worse on Xbox most of the time. So uh, I found a few things. I disabled 2.4 gigahertz on my router. Problem almost completely went away. Um, I changed my router channels to two and uh, I think nine or 10. Uh, when my router had picked six, I had some interference. When my router picked nine, I had interference. Um, it just kind of depends. If you have an issue with the transmitter and it's cutting out wirelessly, unplug the transmitter and wait a while um, I found that sometimes it'll renegotiate or pick a different signal. And I had one night where it was so flawless. I'm like, I'd rather deal with getting the wireless to work just so I can hear how good these headphones sound when I'm gaming. Um, and that's kind of where I'm going with this. So on PlayStation, again, I didn't even use the extension cord on my PS5. Um, it worked flawlessly. On PC, it's been really, really solid, but I had to pick the right USB port. So... I think you could have issues. Now, would I sell this to every single person if a family member who's not too tech savvy asks me uh, for the best $300 headset? I may not recommend this to them if they want wireless just because it's a lot of tinkering. If you don't care about tinkering and you're just looking for the best thing you can get for $300, the Penrose X is it. It's ridiculous. And it is shocking when you hear what these sound like to an Astro A50. And I'm not going to knock other brands. Um, I have a lot of headphones I review, obviously. And I've reviewed some that are $200 analog-only headsets and headphones that sound incredible. And I enjoy using them. Then I switch to this with my little tune, which, again, I like to bump the bass a little bit. And it's a whole nother world. You do the Atmos demos on Xbox. Ridiculous. Um, so if you're okay with that and you understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about channel changes on your router then this headset should be fine for you. Now the workaround, and this gets so loud it hurts your ears. Um, you can use this as an aux headset on Xbox. So at the end of the day, if, if you just want good audio and you don't want to deal with wireless, or let's say you get one home and you're having some issues with the wireless, plug in the aux to your controller. Yeah, you lose the game to chat party mix um, control, but you can adjust that on the Xbox, no problem. Zero wireless cutout issues. Now you get the best possible mic quality, super clean sound. And to me, I had a just unbelievable gaming experience. So I'm just being honest. And I hope that helps you get a more realistic expectation of what to expect. I did occasionally have some wireless hiss or hums, if you will, on the left ear cup. That's where the wireless transmitter is naturally where all the buttons and electronics are. Um, it's worse when you're simultaneously using Bluetooth and wireless gaming. If you shut off the Bluetooth side, a lot of the noise goes away. If you switch to aux, all of the noise goes away, and it wasn't consistent. Again, uh, there's a firmware update that's supposed to fix some of this, so you can always wait, but I can tell you if you're okay with aux or tinkering with your setup until you find the sweet spot, um, these things just sound incredible. They really do, and that's the biggest thing I can say on this headphone is it ruins almost everything else under $500. Um, when you compare them on an A to B test, a blind test, oh, I can tell you nine out of 10 people are always gonna pick these when they put on blindfold and someone just sticks them on their head. They just sound so good. Um, so while I commend Odyssey for putting out such a high quality sounding product for 300, um, I think if they come out with a new Penrose down the road or the right firmware that fixes all the issues with this, this would easily be the top recommendation. So if you're okay with that, great. 
Um, that about covers my experience. I still use these when I can. I review headsets a lot, so I'm constantly changing them. But this is definitely one of my top picks for gaming because, uh, especially on PlayStation, I never really had issues with PlayStation. They sound so good. Um, I sometimes don't like dealing with the wire, even though I can get really good audio there. Um, having something that sounds this good wirelessly is pretty sweet. So, um, trying to think if there's anything else we missed here. If you're tuning it for Xbox, I mentioned the whole USB-C cable thing. That's the only way you can change the sound profiles built into this. You can always set this to flat or leave it flat, which is how it comes out of the box, and then purchase the Dolby Atmos license for PC or Xbox or both, and then that'll let you tune your audio profile wirelessly without needing to have a USB-C cable connected. The other thing I noticed, if you're using USB-C to your computer and aux to that same computer, then you have a ground loop issue and that can create a buzz. That's just how electronics work. Um, so unplug one or the other and the, the humming noise goes away. So, but yeah, I really, really like it. It's just not for everybody. And that's how I can end this review. So this probably went long, I'm sorry. I really hope to get it under 20 minutes, but this is a super passionate thing for me. And I, I hope I helped you make the right decision and what your next headset is. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you think this is the right headset for you, I will put a link in the description below, both for the Penrose and Penrose X. That'll take you to Amazon. It's not some special affiliate kickback thing I get from Odyssey. It's literally just an Amazon shopping link. It helps support the channel, and that's what I use to buy all the stuff that people don't send me. So anyway, thank you guys again so much for the support. Channel growth has been great, as is the feedback, and I will see you next time. Bye.